this is the ultra-fast dynamics lab here at UCL. And what we try and do is we try and use ultra-fast laser pulses to look at reaction dynamics as they actually happen. So if you consider the simplest reaction there is, say you've got a diatomic molecule, you've got two atoms bonded together, how long does it take for that bond to break and those atoms to become separate? In reality, it takes between 10 and 100 femtoseconds for this to happen. And a femtosecond is a millionth of a billionth of a second. So you can imagine we're going to need a really, really fast camera to be able to take pictures of these events. So back here, we've got uh, the kit that actually does the job. Inside here is where all the action happens, and we've got a high vacuum can separated into two parts. On the left-hand side over here, we've got our molecular beam source. So we've got a high pressure of gas behind a small hole and this high pressure of gas explodes out of that hole, producing a speed of sound beam of molecules towards our interaction region. So over here is where the laser actually crosses those molecules. So we've got our molecule, our first laser pulse comes in and excites that molecule and starts the reaction happening. So it's starting, the bonds are starting to break and rearrange. We then come in with our second laser pulse and take snapshots of that molecule as it's changing. So in order to do that, we need those really fast laser pulses to, put, to catch those really fast pictures. And that's what these sort of black boxes at the back here do. So they may look like fairly boring uh, black box machines, but inside there's a really complicated set of optics that are used to produce the right colours at the right times uh, for our experiments to actually work. I really enjoy what I do, not only because of the technical aspect of being able to follow something so fast and so small, but because it gives you an unbiased view of what's actually going on within the molecule. You're not trying to infer what's happened by measuring some end result. So you can get clues as to whether the molecule's doing a really good or a really bad job at its particular task. So that gives you ways to maybe modify the molecule, change the way it's structured to improve it at that task. So this can have really good implications for the way solar cells work, improving their efficiency, or improving the way we deliver drugs through photodynamic therapy. Even if at the minute what we're really studying is the fundamentals of chemistry and the simplest reactions.